All right, so just to wrap up the input options section of the presentation, we do of course still have the capacity for scanning music in uh, or opening it from a PDF. So PhotoScore still has the, uh, the same interface and uh, options for for doing that just like it did before. This one's a picture of, of Ultimate 7 but Ultimate 8 looks the same except with the new Notate Me feature in there as well that we saw before. And yeah there's been a, a number of improvements to the, the scanning algorithms uh, under the hood as well. Uh, so you can certainly uh, access scanning features in the program as always. If you do a lot of uh, transcription of archive material uh, it can be really helpful to save tons of time in that regard. So let's have a little look at text as a, a pretty important area of what we do in, uh, in score writing. I'm trying to draw a bit of attention to the flexibility that you have with, with text in Sibelius now. Uh, since version 7 there are a number of improvements including word wrap for text so that text has a boundary uh, that you can define when you copy in from other applications in particular to save it all ending up in one silly long line like it used to in Sibelius 6 and earlier when you copy in a large text block. But we can also angle text and do all kinds of things with the font very much like you can in a word publishing application. So in lots of aspects one of the things I'm trying to demonstrate with this presentation score is that depending on what kind of material you want to produce you don't necessarily always have to uh, switch between Sibelius and Word so, or, uh, or Sibelius and some other publishing application to create the finished product. Um, chances are with manipulating text the way you can in Sibelius and, uh, and bringing in images and things like that, as I've done in this score, you can uh, get a really nice finished product directly within Sibelius itself. So um, just looking at different text styles and how they can affect your score, playback uh, is the most obvious area to look at because various text styles and terms when they're placed in the score at specific points will have a direct effect on the playback engine of Sibelius in exactly the same way um, that they would have the direct, uh, directive effect on the uh, live performer that might be reading your score. So in this example here for instance we're going to go in the violin stave uh, from pizzicato to arco and back to pits etc and we're going to swell between double p and double f in the dynamics because they've been placed on either side of hairpins and you'll hear all of those things interpreted by the playback engine uh, exactly as they should be by a, uh, a live performing musician as well so i'll just play that through So we can hear those things all being interpreted uh, at the, the point where they've been entered. If I just zoom in, you can see how this works. The, uh, the pizzicato text object has been entered on this particular beat, uh, as has this dynamic. So that's what the playback engine is going to interpret from that point on until something changes to tell it otherwise, such as the Arco directive here and the, uh, the triple F uh, directive in the dynamics. So. That's uh, playback um, being interpreted by or being responsive to, uh, to text in the score. Um, just looking at a few textiles that have their own underlying algorithms. Uh, for example, chord symbols and chord diagrams are a good one to look at. If I just give an example here, uh, for instance, actually let me just bring that one back and I'll do this one up here because it's got a lot of superscript info that I can duplicate to show you how this works. The chord symbols option in the text tab, which of course houses the uh, styles that I was talking about before, such as technique and expression. All of those things are housed in the styles menu, uh, which is this large drop down menu you can get to here. Um, that can be filtered down to uh, common or just the ones used in the score to, to make it less cumbersome when it covers the whole page uh, when you switch to it. But just moving on from those particular text objects to some more specialized ones. Uh, so the chord symbols area, because there's uh, clearly a lot of uh, extra info going on with, with chord symbols, they've got their own special area in the, in the text tab. Uh, so if I select a note and choose this option here, chord symbol or control K, 
which would be Command-K on Mac. And what I'm going to do, to duplicate this chord symbol up here, I've got my blinking cursor down here waiting for entry in the text object. And I'm going to basically type in an abbreviation from what I can see up there. So without uh, trying to do anything particularly fancy, I'm just going to go AM7, uh, lowercase b, then number 5, slash D, shift 3 for the sharp. And then I'll hit space. And that keeps me in note, uh, sorry, in text entry mode with the chord text object. So I can then type in a chord symbol for the next note or keep hitting space until I get to a note that I want to add a chord symbol at. Um, but when I, I hit space or if I was to hit escape, you'll see it creates that superscript uh, information and the, the nice layout for the chord symbol by itself. Uh, these ones here, I've, I've changed the font size. That's why they're a bit larger. But um, that's uh, essentially how, how your chord symbols work. But what you also have with these, if I just zoom in on our fretboard diagram and also the chord symbol itself here, um, you can cycle through these and find uh, all of the various options that you could most likely imagine. Um, for example, the fretboard diagram here, we have this option here called Revoice Chord Diagram uh, under the text tab in Chord Symbols. And if I keep clicking on that, we have a shortcut for it as well, of course, but it will then just cycle through all of the possible options uh, that it has in its bank for how that chord could occur on the guitar. And as you can see, it's pretty exhaustive. So there's a lot of, a lot of things to choose from there. It doesn't uh, quite give you the one you need uh, first time. And you can, with the fretboard diagrams, you can go in uh, to the chord symbol area here uh, and choose the option to edit the chord diagram. And you can get to that directly in the ribbon as well. And that will bring up a, an edit window so you can be as finicky as you like with how that should be laid out. And the same exists for chord symbols as well. So we look at equivalent chord text uh, being the, the option that, that closely relates to that. So as I click through these options here, you'll see we get some, some more simple representations and some unusually complex ones as well. Uh, so something like that. A half diminished 7 over D sharp would possibly be my preference, or maybe the C minor 6 over E flat. But that's just an example of some of the flexibility you have with, with chord symbols and their associated diagrams, which are entirely optional. You can show them with or without and, and change those things anytime you need to. Another text style that has an associated algorithm uh, running along in the background when you use it uh, is, of course, lyrics, uh, because lyrics have uh, the property that they need space, which uh, sometimes isn't accounted for by the notation they're being applied under. Uh, so what happens when you're in lyric entry mode, if I just uh, pop some in from a little snippet of Stairway to Heaven we have here, just watch what happens to the notation as I uh, enter one word, and just like with chord symbols, I'll hit space to get to the next note. Space again. See how the notation moves around a bit to make room? And because this is a two-syllable word, I'm going to hit hyphen. All right, so you can see it adjusting um, just after it runs one lyric into another. As soon as I hit space, it jumps to the next, uh, next note and then adjusts the, uh, the spacing accordingly. And that time I only had to hit space once, and it's just bypassed the rest because it knows that a rest doesn't I need to have lyrics underneath it. So something else uh, that's worth pointing out when we're looking at lyrics though, if I'll just filter those from Home tab Filter. And this one has a special option here because quite often you want to filter lyrics in isolation and delete them. Um, if I just scroll down to something I prepared earlier, this here is a block of text uh, obviously. Um, it could come from a block of text in Sibelius, it could have come from a, a selection in a web page of A to Z lyrics or something like that. Um, but I've put it in here to show you that when I copy it, uh, if I do Control C or copy from the Home tab clipboard area, I could have copied it from anywhere, it doesn't have to be in Sibelius. Uh, it's just a block of plain text. But I'm going to go back up to that area where I was playing around with lyric entry. 
And I've got all this data in a text block, which is a, a block of the first verse of Stairway to Heaven, um, copied to the clipboard. And I'll select this first note and go Control L. It puts me in lyric entry mode. Um, we can, of course, go to the lyrics area here and choose lyrics line one, but Control L is our shortcut. And, and I'm going to hit Control V. That gives me the first, word, uh, the first word from my copied text block. And if I hold down Control and keep hitting V, it will cycle through, automatically hyphenate. All right. So this is a really fast way um, when you're doing arrangements of popular music and uh, all those kind of exercises um, to get your lyric entry in really quickly. If you know uh, what your starting point is, that one uh, where I restarted, I thought it was the beginning of a, a sentence again, but um, a pretty minor thing to deal with under the circumstances. But that saved me typing in in this case a sentence, but really it'll save you typing in an entire song if the lyrics are already there and pre-prepared. Um, so I like to do it usually a line at a time and just check for mistakes as I go. Um, but you do also have the option to do lyrics from text file as well. So if you're sure the lyrics are correct, uh, sorry, if you're sure your melody is uh, correct in terms of the lyrics that you're going to use, um, you can pop them into a TXT file, just a standard text file from WordPad or text edit on Mac um, and then open that file using this option uh, in Sibelius directly and it will then just add those lyrics across the, the passage that you've got selected. So that can be uh, a way that's even faster again to, uh, to get everything in. So that's lyrics. Um, another question I get asked in my role and support a lot is uh, can my chord symbols uh, play back in Sibelius? Uh, and the answer technically is no. Sibelius can't play back uh, any chord that doesn't have notation data associated with it. Uh, but it can nonetheless create um, notation data for pre-existing chord symbols automatically. And then that notation data can be hidden and then the stave associated with it can be hidden as well. Um, so in this case, if I select this passage here, and we go to the text tab, which we're already in. On the far right, we choose plugins. And I'll choose the realize chord symbols option. And we'll accept guitar. And I might choose one of these alternate chord style options here. Our Bertie bass is always nice for this particular example. And I'll click OK. And just scroll down a bit back to where we were and we'll see we've got a a new staff created below the, the previous one uh, that contains uh, the actual played chords representing the chord symbols above. So if I play through this it does a reasonable job of uh, harmonising this one. Just need to cheat and boost the volume of the melody a bit. etc. So that's uh, certainly something you can use once you've uh, written out say a lead sheet or something like that and need a quick way to get those those chords into the score. Uh, that can certainly be a really fast way to do it. You can do the reverse of this as well. I shouldn't say the reverse but you can do chords from melody too uh, using the note input tab and plugin called Add Simple Harmony, which is found under the Composing Tools area. I won't use this here, but 
if uh, I just bring up the dialogue, it doesn't do a very good job with this example because it seems to think it's in, uh, in C major instead of A minor for some reason. But um, this one can, uh, can be a good starting point for harmonising your score if you've just written out a melody and you want to give your brain a bit of a rest and, and just have Sibelius give you a head start. Um, you can do a very similar uh, kind of thing with this and give yourself Alberti or block chords etc and all that and it will go through and give you some uh, harmonisation uh, options uh, transcribed into a new stave for you. So that's uh, good to keep in mind as well. Uh, we can of course add chord symbols from notated chords too. So uh, in, let's say for instance if this was, if I deleted that one and added a let's C. So we had just a C triad there and I selected that bar, said add from notes and just accept these default options and that gives us our, our chord symbol here. So you can of course uh, double click to select a line or triple click to select a stave throughout or select a page at a time and go through and add, add such things. Um, but it's uh, certainly very easy to, to get your chord symbols in without having to write them all out.